Well, on a day of record high numbers and the collapse of the Atlantic bubble, it's a good time to talk with Canada's chief public health officer. If the pandemic is a war, Dr. Theresa Tam is our top general. We spoke earlier today about everything from how we got here to what we need to do for the holidays. Her answers are frank, but not without hope. Listen, you're right here. I'm just doing a little test here. One, two. Hi, uh, Dr. Tam, this is uh, Andrew. That's the million dollar question. All right, well, Dr. Tam, very good of you to make the time to, to talk to us. I really appreciate that. It's my pleasure to talk to you. So, so let's talk about the fact that we are seeing pretty alarming case numbers across the country. And I'm sure on a personal level, they're, they're deeply disturbing to you as well. My, my question is, in your mind, I mean, broadly speaking, where did things go wrong? Well, I think um, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, with the initial wave, um, I think we actually knew much less about the virus. But there was a uh, incredible collaboration across the whole of society in Canada in flattening that initial wave. Of course, over the summer months, some of those uh, more restrictive measures, and, and rightly so, were relaxed a bit more. With the, um, you know, the force coming, um, uh, you know, looming ahead, um, with some of the increased interactions in society, and you know more spread in certain uh, situations, um, the cases unfortunately accelerated. Right, right. So, so help me understand then the weak link as as you see it in all of this, because I can't help but wondering, you know, was it a policy rules issue? Was it a behavioral issue? Is which is I think what you're in part alluding to, or is it a, a logistical thing, a, a contact tracing, a testing issue? What what is the the source of your greatest concern that has led us to where we are today? Well, I think it's a matter of all of those components coming together. So I think with the um, provincial territorial medical officers of health, they were really trying very hard to achieve a balance where they could keep up with the test, trace and contact, as well as keeping society open. That balance, nobody knows exactly how that balance was going to be achieved. So they were trying very hard to, to provide that balance, really, really hard until that balance, I think, tilted towards the acceleration in the cases faster than their system was able to manage them. And hence, we need both the public health system uh, strengthening, but also the public to help uh, in these instances to drive and flatten that curve down again. So then let me ask you this. I mean, the fact that we are seeing uh, much more severe restrictions come into effect right, right across uh, the country. What happens after that? I mean, do you have faith that the, the case counts don't simply slingshot back up after the lockdown eases? I mean, how do we stop riding the roller coaster? That's a very important point. So during the, this period where um, greater restriction, greater restrictive measures are being put in place um, by the province and territories, this is the time to you know, really ensure that if plans need to be shifted, they have to be or strengthened. They have to do it during this time. There's um, need to again strengthen the testing uh, capacity. There's enough. You know, we keep putting out tests. How do they get deployed? Um, and what kind of uh, additional contact tracing and other capacities are needed? And of course, the federal government is there to support them. But the, you can't just take your foot off the brake pedal um, without additional um, capacity being built. Because if you did, as I said, the, the, the immunity level in the population is still low. So then the inevitable thing that's going to occur is that the cases will rise again. R right. But, but I got to ask you about Christmas. I mean, you, you've got to be worried about the holiday season coming up, right? I mean, ha has it ever been a serious consideration for you to, to just, I don't know, explicitly tell Canadians, you know what, don't gather, don't do it, it's not worth it? Well, I think we are essentially at that point where um, the communication is that Christmas is not going to be um, having any kind of um, large group interactions for sure. Even with family, you got to really think twice, avoid non-essential travel, keep to your current household contacts as much as possible. 
And, but we know if Canadians do decide to have a small gathering, still observe all the different public health measures. Um, not everywhere in Canada is the same, but really uh, right now, if I looked across the country, that message probably should resonate uh, throughout um, all provinces and territories. I have to squeeze one more question in for you. Obviously, the vaccine, um, in whatever form it comes, is a source of great optimism for a lot of people. What else is there that makes you optimistic beyond that? Well, there are, there are many things. So, um, as you said, the vaccine is one of them. Um, increasingly, um, you know, even in the last months, um, much has been learned about how to uh, treat and take care of patients with COVID. So that's really important. There will be more treatments um, that we can um, consider as well. We will always see the end of a pandemic. No pandemic doesn't have an ending. And um, I think, again, we need to sort of stick together as a population, as a country, in order to just get through it. And so this is um, a, just a, a period of time where we have to maintain these measures. Dr. Tam, uh, I thank you warmly for your time, and I hope we get the chance to talk again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.